half in the bag. The jerks can't fix the VCR right. Welcome to this whenever we feel like half in the bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And we just got finished watching Transformers 3. Rise of the Dark Side of the Moon? Revenge of the Dark of the... No, no, no. It's Revenge of the Fallen Moon. Revenge of the Moon? R Rise of the Planet of the Revenge of the Moon. No, you're thinking of Rise of the Silver Surfer. Rise, rise of the Revenge? Of rise Sith? of the Cobra. Revenge is a of movie, the Sith? Right. Rise of, it is. That's the that's the, uh, the 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 mask movie. Is there some sort of like music album called Rise of the Dark Side of the Moon? No, it's just Dark Side of the Moon. It's by Led Zeppelin. Who? Revenge of the Fallen Silver Surfer? Annie Hall? Oh right. Transformers 3. Annie Hall. Anyways, due to the film's obnoxious running time of two and a half hours, we decided to watch the movie in shifts. It seemed like the only logical solution, so I uh, took the first shift and watched the first hour and 15 minutes of the movie. I'm on my way to work. Luckily, I'm just first shift today. Mike has second shift. And then Mike came over to take over my shift and watch the remaining hour 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> oh, shit, my shift just ended. Mike's ready to take over, I think. You ready? Yeah. Alright. See you later. Good luck. So I'm starting my shift with Transformers 3. It's about halfway through the movie, and uh, I'm about to watch it right now. And we are not shitting you. We actually did this. Uh, Jay watched the first half, and I watched the second. And we are now going to review the film, having not seen the entire film, either of us. Well, now's the part where we try and figure out what happened in the movie. Uh, Jay. Yes. What do you think happened in the second half of the film? Well, just as I left the theater was when the action was finally starting to kick in. Mm -hmm. uh, literally nothing of consequence happens in the first hour, 15 minutes. It's just set up for what you know is going to be elongated action. From what I understood, there was Leonard Nimoy was wearing a robot costume, and he was a red guy. And there was a different guy who was like a dump truck, uh, and he was more of a nasty guy. The dump truck was Megatron. Oh. He's introduced early on. He's still alive, even though oh. I think he died in the other one. I okay, don't remember. See, no, I was wondering the whole time, where's Megatron? Megatron was the dump truck. The oh, okay. dumpy one with, like, his face was fucked up. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That was Megatron. Okay. Well, so, with the plot, what do you think happened? Spoilers. Um, well, the whole thing was there's pillars mm -hmm. from, from the moon. That's correct. And, and the Decepticons want the pillars. And just when I left the theater, you found out that Leonard Nimoy was a traitor. You right. thought he was on the good side, and it turns out he's on the bad side. Uh, did he redeem himself? Did he become a good guy at the end? Did that happen? Or was he just a bad guy for the rest of the movie? Well, what do you think? I would think he would redeem himself. No, he didn't redeem himself? No, uh, Optimus Prime executes him. Really? <laughs> He actually begs for mercy and Optimus Prime shoots him in the face. No way! So there is absolutely no character arc for that no, character. No, no. Okay. You may lose your faith in us, but never in yourselves. From here, the fight will be your own. But okay, well what do you not. think happened overall with the with the with the pillars? <sighs> with the pillars. Um, well there was five pillars. Do you know what there were four? It, the end, like, if you had all the pillars, you could cause the end of the world or something. There's some jargon about, like, you can control the space-time continuum and shit like I, that. I think they must have revealed that in my half of the film. Okay. It was, they wanted it was to very bring, vague. I didn't know what... They wanted to bring their planet, uh, whatever it's called. What's their home planet called? Um, Autobot land or... Uh, Autobot land, I think I don't is know. the official They wanted to bring their planet through a time portal to Earth. Okay. To kind of encompass Earth or orbit it, and then they're going to use all the humans on Earth as their slave. Okay. But that, no, that's actually, I think that's the point where they have to put the four pillars 
to shoot the lasers off. They have to plant pillars. Do pillars shoot lasers? Wait a minute. In the half I saw, yes. Patrick Dempsey becomes a turncoat and he's working for the Decepticon. Oh. Is there no indications of that? Patrick Dempsey was in one scene of the first hour and 15 he's minutes He's the guy the who has the house in the, the Milwaukee's Art Museum. Yeah. When you meet him, though, they're in Washington, D.C. The Milwaukee Art Museum is in Washington, D.C. in the context of the movie. Get back to work, you lazy prick! Oh, you know who he works for? Sam Witwicky works for John Malkovich. Is John Malkovich even in the second half of the movie? No. Really? I, didn't, I don't remember seeing him. What is his character? He's his boss. No, no. He just, really? No, I don't, I don't John remember. John Malkovich is just completely absent I remember from the watching the, the credits movie? and going, where, where was John Malkovich? Yeah, I don't see him. John Malkovich is his wacky boss because he finally gets a job working in the mail yeah, room he's not for John Malkovich. And there's a, a ton of time in the first half devoted to John Malkovich. And he's just abandoned? Was John Malkovich the comic relief? Everyone is the comic relief in these movies. Not Optimus Prime. Except for Optimus Prime. Guy in a wheelchair? Um, the guy who's in, the guy with the deli owner. Oh, John Turturro? John Turturro. In a wheelchair? He was in a wheelchair the second half of the film. Why was he in a wheelchair? Was he in an action scene early on where he broke his leg? No. Come on, he must have. No, I, I don't remember him ever getting injured. He's the guy who looks like, like Eugene Levy. He looks a little like you, like like a, like a stretch. A more Eugene a Levy? more handsome Eugene Levy. Okay. If that's, no, nothing happens to him in the first half. I think though. everyone looks like a more handsome Eugene Levy. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Jeong, who is the 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 dude, the Asian gangster dude in The Hangover oh, Two. right. I think yeah. he's contractually obligated to be in every movie ever now. Oh. But he shows up early on, and he's being Ken Jeong. He's doing the exact same thing he does really? in everything. Really? In in what context? Uh, he he is like a conspiracy guy, and he knows who Sam Witwicky is. He works in the same. Uh, uh, place a sandwich wiki, uh -huh. and there's a comical scene where they're in a bathroom stall together, and Ken Jong is trying to together. Explain to him. Yes, Ken Jong confronts him in the bathroom stall and tries to show him his whole conspiracy theory thing, and then John Malkovich walks in, and all he sees is Ken Jong with his pants down, and he assumes that there's there's is, there's it, fag shenanigans fag, going on. Fag. Is his wacky comical uh, paranoid conspiracy theory correct? Is yes. It about yeah, the, it's uh, about exactly what's going on. Immediately after the gay panic scene, uh, uh, a Decepticon shows up and pushes Ken Jong out a window, and he falls to his death. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Everything humans know of our planet, we were told had been shared. You lied to us. You've made a grave mistake. There's a small group of people that, that know about the Ark and the moon situation. One of them is Ken Jeong. One the of them is Ark? This, what, the Ark is what's on the moon, and that's where they... Oh, I, you know, I missed the whole moon thing. Okay, well that's all in the first half. See, the, the Ark Obviously. is... Obviously. There's the opening sequence, which I will admit was pretty well done, which establishes the, the Ark landing on the moon. What is the Ark? The Ark is the ship that left uh, Transformer Planet just as it was uh, under uh, attack by the Decepticons. Oh, so like a Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that's, where, that's where Leonard Nimoy in the robot suit was. He was on the Ark. Um, With the Autobots. There were no De Decepticons on the Ark, or I, were there? I, I don't know who was on the Ark. Okay. I really don't. They, they do have the Ark in the end of the movie, in the second half, I should okay. say. Um, and it's, NASA owns it, and they attach a space shuttle to it. Okay. I don't know why, <laughs> but... They, it's still on the moon, though, right? No, 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 it's on Earth. It's on um, Earth? Yes. When did it get to Earth? I don't know. They say NASA had it, and then they, the humans in the UN decide that, that Autobots are bad guys and they, that they should leave the planet Earth. Okay. Do you, do you remember anything about that? There's nothing to set that up. In the, the first half of the movie- That came out of nowhere for me. Okay, because yeah, in the first half of the movie, uh, uh, Optimus Prime goes to the moon to resurrect Leonard Nimoy in the robot suit uh, from the Ark. He's still in Why? the Ark. I don't know. Why didn't he do that in the first two films? I don't know. 
Maybe we're to assume that at some point NASA got it off the moon and brought it down to Earth, and there's some sort of fucking no, covert that, no, operation. No, 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 because the Ark was not what the Decepticons came or what the Autobots came to Earth on. So that must be something. What did from, you said they escaped the planet? Not the not uh, Optimus Prime and them. They left on a different ship. Something Were there two ships? They they knew that there was going to be a problem because after they escape is when the Decepticons spring their trap, okay. which is we're going to, for no reason at all, attack Chicago mm. and make Chicago a base of operations to shoot lasers into the sky from the pillars, and Chicago will become our new super fortress for our new planet that we're going to have that's going to be a robot planet where humans are slaves to us for no reason. Okay. Once Chicago gets all blowed up. Yeah. Then they say, we have to get to Chicago to turn off the pillars. Okay. And plus, also, Patrick Dempsey steals Sam Witwicky's girlfriend mm. named Giselle Bunderson. Yes. Um, not, not Megan Fox. Not, is that her name, Giselle Bunderson? Uh, no. Giselle bon Bunchen was a model in like the early 90s. Okay, anyways, this chick has amazing lips. <laughs> oh, the hot girl. Giselle Wunderson says, Megatron, Leonard Nimoy in a robot suit is, is, you're his bitch. That was her exact words. And then Megatron goes and beats up Leonard Nimoy and then robot suit guy, ro what's his name? Optimus, whatever. He goes, I'm gonna get you. And he hits him with the sword. And then the other guy shows up and hits the other bad guy. And then Sam Witwicky shows up and goes, Optimus. Optimus Prime gets his arm ripped off. Okay. And Sam Witwicky goes, we did it. And Optimus Prime goes, sometimes your allies can turn on you, but we will always be here to protect you from bad things. And that goes, Mike, directed by Michael Bay. During the ending, as all the action was progressing, I was picturing Transformers 3, Rise of the Dark, Fallen Moon. Yes. I was picturing the film in screenplay format and the screen, screenplay writer going, writing it. And it's like, Sam, look out. 16 and a half pages of exp, <laughs> uh, exp, uh, exp, Explaining the action. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, uh, lasers shoot off into outer space as the planet comes into the galaxy and the And then the next line is, Optimus! Optimus! And then the next line, Sam Wintwicky says, Hold on! <laughs> Exclamation, and he, as he grabs Janelle Bun Bunderson's, Bunderson's, Optimus, you were one of the chosen. No, I was one of the ones who had the vision to help the humans. Optimus. No, die now. And then they explode. Sometimes our allies turn on us, but we will always. Well, that leads us to the broader picture of all the Transformers films and the Michael Bay phenomenon. Yes. As it is, which is the, you know, as some have called it, the death of cinema <laughs> or, you know, the lowering of the IQ yeah, or the yeah. lack of attention span or whatever, whatever, you know, phrase you want to put on it. It's, yeah. it's fairly apparent to me that the films are devoid of substance. They're pandering. They fill every possible cliche you can put in a movie. Yeah. They're insulting, stupid, dumb, but you can't complain about them if you go and see them. Fool me once. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame, shame on, on me. me. Exactly. Fool me three times, you get uh, uh, Transformers 3. Michael Bay wants to make Transformers 3, and if there's an audience for it, so be it. What does not exist are the art police that go, this is terrible, stop. Yeah. If there's an audience for it, and, and yes, it might be slowly degrading the, the intellectual, artistic you know, community, like, but just don't go watch it. So if you 
pay to see a product that you know is inferior, that has a history, uh, a long history, and the newer stuff sucks, and you know it's going to suck, but you are still willing to pay for it, uh, what you are doing is encouraging more movies like that to get made. That's right, Jay. You see, I see Michael Bay films, especially the Transformers films, as like, like a bully. And, and for people that complain about them endlessly and complain about them and you say, well, did you see it? Yeah. Oh, well, did you pay to see it? Yeah. So it's like, it's like a bully. You, you, how, do you, how do you stop a bully? You ignore them. You ignore them. It's over. I'm sorry, but it's over. Here's my question to you. Yes. In the, in the late 70s, early 80s, with the rise of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and those times when the film snobs of the 70s were crying the death of cinema with things like Jaws and Star Wars. Yeah. Is this the second wave of that? And Ooh. if it is, how much worse can it possibly get? <laughs> I, I wouldn't call these movies the death of cinema because it goes in waves. I mean, you look at like what happened in the 70s, like all of a sudden, you know, Easy Rider was a big movie. And so the studios were like, fuck, there must be something to this. Let's let the filmmakers do whatever they want. And you end up with things like Taxi Driver and, and, and movies like that. So right now we're at a point where there's movies like Transformers and The Zookeeper. Uh, it'll take a turn at some points. Okay. I, I, I'm a little more optimistic than just saying that, that movies like this are the death well, of cinema. When I was watching the film, as we discussed earlier, the, the two 12-year-old kids in the front row that were on, on Twitter. Yeah. And, I, and, and as I was watching the movie, and, and there's, all, there's robots fighting each other and explosions and the Chicago being blown up and blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, oh, I got to stop and text message this person. Yeah. And, and all I was thinking about was, Yes, this is horribly stupid. And yes, you know, attention deficit disorder and blah, blah, blah. But if the film itself had a really compelling story, regardless of Twitter and Facebook <laughs> and whatever the kid was doing, if it had a really compelling story, he probably would have stopped and watched it. Yeah. So there is still hope. Oh, sure. Left. Sure. Um, if you can still make a movie that has compelling plot and compelling characters. Because I, I, I've watched lots of screenings of things where people just kind of like trail off and they get bored. But then there's that one thing that someone makes that's really engaging. And yeah. everyone just kind of goes and watches <laughs> it and gets really engrossed in what's happening. Yeah. And regardless of CGI or special effects or whatever newfangled technology is happening on screen or, or fast-paced editing or, yeah. or whatever. As long as it's like one scene leads to the next, I'm curious about what's happening. It, it's, it's human curiosity and, it, and, and, it, and that's what engages you. It's, sure. it's, the, it's the core of a story and it dates back to the beginnings of human civilization. <laughs> it's what's going to happen next. Yeah. And no matter what excitement you put on the screen, it's what's going to happen next is all that matters. And Michael Bay does not have the what's going to happen next oomph. Don't stop it. What? I don't know. To me, what's baffling is the people that aren't complete dummies, that aren't complete idiots, that still try and defend stuff like this. They say, well, what were you expecting? I've been noticing that happening a lot more lately. Yeah, they say, well, what were you expecting? But they go watch it. Yeah. And then... No, but, but that's what I'm saying. It's the people that defend something like Transformers, where they say, what were you expecting? It's a Michael Bay movie. I just wanted to see some action and some explosions. But then the other problem is the people that when something intelligent or relatively well-made comes out, they say it's overrated. It's the internet thing. Something like Inception or like Dark Knight or movies like that. that Ooh, not... you, you just burned a lot of people by saying Inception. That's I'm sure I did, but that's the thing is like, you know, well, it's, a, it's a straightforward it. action movie, but it's not insulting and it's right. not idiotic. Yes. The same people that talk about how terrible Transformers is will say that Inception is overrated. So you end up with that mentality of like, you can't please anybody. 
But that's the, that to me is the biggest problem is the the, the mentality of like everything is terrible. Uh, everything is either awful and aimed at idiots, or everything is overrated. And there's nothing in between. Nobody can just enjoy anything. So, after everything we've said, uh, I still, I don't know. I, I don't know what your recommendation is gonna be. Would you recommend Transformers 3? To a human? I would recommend this movie to people that like action. Who are you talking to? There's a camera there. What? I would recommend this movie to people that like action, but I would recommend coming in after the first hour and 20 minutes. What it looks like to me is just a guy who likes action, he likes hot babes, he likes fast cars, he likes explosions. Yes. And he doesn't really care what the context is or the substance. No. And he wants to see all of those things in action. Right. Which is, of course, taking one concept or a joke and doing it so much or so over the top to where it becomes pointless or self-indulgent. Right. You can't do something that's that self-indulgent because it just becomes juvenile after a certain yeah. point. It's, uh, juvenile is a good word. Yeah. Because juvenile makes me think of like, like poop or, or pee jokes yeah. or fart jokes or right. something like that where someone finds a fart joke or a poop joke funny and they, they take it over the top. Yeah. And they, they just drag, drag it, it out. out. Yeah. 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 We Absolutely. said that at the same time because, you know, we, we know exactly what we're talking we about. We know exactly what we would never want to do. Drag it out. Yeah. yeah. Drag it out. Who is it? It's Mailman Tommy. Oh, fuck. Every time that guy comes here, he's got some kind of fucking attitude problem. I'll get it. All right. Okay, you can stop knocking now. I, I only knocked once. What the fuck? What? Hey, Mike. Jay, how's the VCR business? Yeah, it's fine. What do you want? Oh, I got this uh, package here from Mr. Plinkett. Can one of you guys sign for it? Yeah, just, just give it to me. I'll take it to him. Yeah, thanks. Okay, all right. Yeah, bye. Hey, dickbag. Yep. No. You want to close the fucking door behind you or what? Absolutely. Have a good one, guys. All right, bye, bye. Who do you think you are? The nerve of that guy. I know. What is that? I don't know, but it is heavy. National medical supplies. Yeah, it says return to sender. Hmm. Mailing it back to him. What's that doing here? I just sent that out last week. Um, the mailman was just here. He, he's returning it to you. What? He can't return that. That's a defective medical product, and I deserve a refund. Oh, God. Oh, God, what is it? That's my used colostomy bag.
guys, I forgot a pen.